and welcome to the WSDOT Disadvantaged Business Enterprise DBE certification video. My name is Benji Hayek and I'm the DBE program engineer and with me today is John Franklin, WSDOT DBE certification specialist. John and I are with WSDOT's Office of Business Opportunity and Equity Compliance or OBAC. Together we'll take you through the WSDOT DBE certification program, the process, benefits, and opportunities. In today's video, we'll start with asking if DBE certification is right for you. Cover the program overview, eligibility requirements, the application process, the benefits of being DBE certified, what opportunities are available, and the overview of the DBE support services and programs. So to begin, is DBE certification right for you? First, you need to ask yourself these questions. Are you interested in working on WSDOT transportation, transit, or aeronautic projects? Do the services offered by your company fit into transportation, transit, or aeronautics? Does increased opportunities in federally funded highway construction and engineering contracting sound good to you? Are you ready to build meaningful mm -hmm. industry relationships? And are you prepared to grow your company? If you answered yes to one or more of these questions, DBE certification might be right for you. This is just a quick overview of the DBE program. DBE program is law codified in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. It prohibits discrimination, provides opportunities and access. The DBE program is applicable to transportation projects that are federally funded and applies to transit, highways, and aviation. Every state that receives USDOT federal funds must have a DBE program and operate within the requirements of the program. DBE program guidance is in the Code of Federal Regulations, 49 CFR, Part 26. The USDOT as well as the FHWA and FTA provide federal oversight to program recipients. The purpose of the program is to ensure non-discrimination and create a level playing field for groups historically hindered to such opportunities such as women and minorities. Our goal is to promote business growth so that small disadvantaged businesses can successfully compete for contracts within and outside of WSDOT for both public and private work. And to do this, recipients of the program such as WSDOT are responsible for narrowly tailoring contract goals for DBE utilization on transportation contracts and supporting the development and successes of businesses holistically. And now I'll be turning it over to John Franklin. John? Hello, I'm John Franklin, and I'm a certification analyst with WSDOT's Office of Business Opportunity and Equity Compliance. And in my portion of the video today, I'm going to talk about DBE certification and the DBE application review process. So what is a DBE? A DBE is a business that is 51% owned and controlled by socially and economically disadvantaged persons that make up the 51% ownership. Also, DBEs are for-profit small businesses. What are the main eligibility requirements for DBE certification? The key eligibility factors are ownership, social and economic disadvantage, control, independence, and business size. Regarding ownership, at least 51% of the business must be owned by socially and economically disadvantaged persons. Next, social disadvantage. Social disadvantage is defined in the regulations and it includes persons that are members of minority groups and also women. Also, Caucasian males are eligible to apply for the DBE program. A determination is made on a case-by-case -case basis of whether an individual, such as a Caucasian male, that is not a member of one of the minority groups, can be found to be socially disadvantaged. Regarding economic disadvantage, a DBE owner must be economically disadvantaged 
as determined by their personal net worth. The disadvantaged owner's personal net worth must be less than $1.32 million. The calculation of personal net worth excludes the applicant's equity in their primary residence, and it also excludes the value of the DBE business. As far as size, the applying firm must qualify as a small business under both the DBE program cap and the SBA small business size standards. The DBE program requires that the company three-year gross receipts average do not exceed $30.4 million. Also, the SBA size limits are based on the specific types of work that the company performs. This cap is determined by a five-year gross receipt average or by the annual average number of employees. Another element in the DBE eligibility requirements is control. The disadvantaged owner must demonstrate that they have control of their business operations and decisions and that they have managerial and technical competence and experience in the line of work performed by the business. Independence is also a factor in DBE eligibility. The applying DBE firm must be independent from all other companies. The company can't be reliant on or dependent upon any other company for its viability and success. Lastly, DBE firms must be for-profit businesses. I'm now gonna address the certification application process. What does a business need to do to apply for DB certification? I'm going to cover the DB application and supporting forms, the on-site interview, and the review of eligibility. A major objective of the DBE program is to ensure that only eligible firms are approved to participate. Let me now tell you about how to apply for DBE certification. On the DBE's website's eligibility and requirements page, you'll find the application forms you need and the instructions on how and where to submit your application. All application forms can be found on the DBE website. The application process is different for firms that are located within Wisconsin and for firms that are located outside of Wisconsin. Wisconsin businesses must complete the application form and submit all the supporting documentation, and they will receive a full and comprehensive application file review. For interstate applicants, which are firms that are located outside of Wisconsin and are already approved as a DBE in their home state, there is a streamlined certification process that requires only that the firm complete our short interstate application form and also submit a copy of the firm's home state DBE approval letter. It's important that you read through the application instructions and the required documentation checklist before you begin. An application requires a lot of information and documentation. It can be an intimidating process for some. When it's time for you to start to fill out the application, start with the checklist. The checklist will provide you with a better understanding of what information and documentation you will need to gather, and it will also help you get started with answering any questions in the application that you might have. Read through the application instructions. Also, the application includes a roadmap for applicants. Be sure to read through it. Don't skip the first few pages of the application. It will likely answer many of the questions that you may have and will make you feel more at ease about getting started with the application. Do not leave any sections of the application blank because this will make it appear to the reviewer that you missed something or skipped something. If something in the application does not apply to you, simply write NA for not applicable. If there's an answer on the application that needs some further explanation from you, include it in the application. 
be sure to keep your original documents. Do not submit any original documents to the DB office along with your application packet. Keep a copy of everything that you submit for your own records and email the application and supporting documentation to the DBE office. One of the forms that you will be required to submit with your DB application packet is the requested work category and geographic area summary form, also known as DT2188 form. NAIX codes are the North American Industry Classification System, which classifies the type of work that a company performs. The DT2188 form is used by the DBE office to determine the work categories and NAICS codes that your company is applying for to perform for DBE credit on WISDOT projects. The purpose of the form is to make it clear to our office and to prime contractors the work that your company has been approved to perform for DBE credit. Those work categories will appear on the DBE directory. The form can be found on the DBE website. The form should be submitted to our office along with the rest of your company's DBE application packet. There are two forms that are in the application packet that must be notarized. One of them is the personal net worth form. It's a separate but required form and it must be notarized along with the affidavit of certification form, which also must be notarized. Save yourself some time by having both forms prepared so that you can have them notarized with one trip to the notary. As a reminder, as you're working through your application, be sure to refer to the document checklist. It will help you to assemble the documentation that will be needed to complete the application. Now we are on to the on-site interview. After you submit your application and supporting documentation, there's a preliminary review to determine if your submission is complete. If the information you submitted is substantially complete, you receive a request to schedule an on-site interview. And the on-site interview is a required step in the certification process and it's really just as it sounds. It involves a site visit and an interview. The interview involves standard questions that we ask every applicant to better understand your business operations. We ask questions such as the responsibilities of the owner and the key individuals of the company. We might ask questions related to the firm's inventory, the firm's equipment, and its workforce. The interviewer will always ask that an applicant will have a copy of their full application in front of, in front of them during the on-site interview because most of the questions that are going to be asked are covered in the application. The on-site visit is also an opportunity for WISDOT to see your operation firsthand. Depending on your company's type of business, the visit may include a tour of your offices, warehouse, facility, shop, and seeing your inventory and the company equipment. The on-site visit is really about gathering the information needed for an eligibility review by our office. No application is approved or denied based solely on an on-site visit. So now we're to the point where all the application documentation has been submitted, an on-site interview has been conducted, and it's time for the DBE office to review the application, the review of eligibility. All application information will be compiled and passed on to the certification analyst for the review. A complete application packet 
is required for the application review to be conducted. If additional information is needed, a request for information and or answers to clarify questions that the analysts may have will be issued to the applicant via in email in a request for information letter. At the point in which the application is complete, the review process by our office can take up to roughly 90 days. An incomplete application will cause the application review to take even longer. So it's really to your advantage and benefit to ensure that all application documentation is as complete as possible. When the application review is complete, you'll receive a written decision via email. And please let me note that the burden of proof is on the applicant. The applicant must demonstrate to the DBE office that they meet the DBE certification eligibility requirements. And now, just to repeat, here is a list of the DBE application forms that you will need to submit as part of your DBE application packet. The uniform application form, the affidavit of certification form, the personal net worth form, the DT2188, requested work category and geographic area summary form. And all these forms can be found on the WISDOT DBE website. And that concludes my portion of this video regarding the DBE certification application review process and DBE certification. And Benji will now inform you of the benefits of DBE certification. Thank you, John. Now that you know a bit more about the DBE program and its purpose and what it takes to become DBE certified, I want to share some of the benefits to participating in the DBE program. Over the next few slides, we will touch on contracting opportunities, growth and development, and the DBE support services. With over a billion dollars in anticipated federal funding in both heavy highway construction and engineering contracting annually, DBE certification expands opportunities for firms to participate on these contracts. This is just a list of work areas where contracting opportunities await. Firms that provide these services and meet the eligibility requirements should consider DBE certification. There is an industry need for contractors and professional services firms to participate in these areas. WISDOT sets DBE attainment goals on contracts with federal funding. Participation goals on federally funded projects mean that prime contractors need DBE certified firms to achieve their contract goals. The triennial goal for federal fiscal years 24, 25, and 26 has been set at 12.42%. Funding has increased 68.4% or $1.5 billion compared to the previous triennial period between 2021 and 2023. There's an estimated $157 million in DBE contractable opportunities per year. Due to the increased funding allocation for DBE attainment over the next three years, WISDOT, Office of Business Opportunity and Equity Compliance, or OBAC, is instituting business growth strategies to increase the number and capacity of DBE firms doing business with WISDOT, leveraging partnerships and educating DBEs on business acumen, state processes, and how to prime DOT contracts. Ways in which WISDOT supports certified DBE firms comes in several forms. DBE firms are automatically listed in the Unified Certification Program, UCP directory, and added to the interactive map. The UCP and the interactive map are accessed on the WISDOT website and where prime contractors can easily locate DBE firms. WISDOT and the DBE Support Services Office offers DBE certified firms several tools to help you grow your firm whether it's management and technical services, capacity building assessment, 
tips on organization, a variety of real world workshops, financial assistance through the loan mobilization program, or access to DBE and small business resources. These are just some of the tools available exclusively to DBE certified firms, and they are free of charge. Together with our industry partners, WISDOT offers DBE certified firms access to services and programs to increase your knowledge through one-on-one -on -one training by industry experts or pairs you with a mentor who will share their expertise and help guide your business growth through the WISDOT Mentor Protege Program. The DBE office hosts the annual DBE workshop and networking summit and partners with industry leaders to build relationships with DBE firms and promote opportunities. WISDOT also organizes DBE stakeholder advisory committees for the construction and professional services industries where advocate groups, DBE firms, and industry leaders are welcome to address concerns, discover new opportunities, and keep the lines of communication open. And as an added bonus, DBE Support Services publishes a series of newsletters throughout the year spotlighting events, DBE firms, projects, and a host of other relevant information you need to know to stay informed and to be competitive. John and I want to thank you for joining us and hope you found this information to be the catalyst you need to decide if becoming DBE certified is right for you. On the slides that follow, you'll find helpful links, contact information, and office locations. Thank you again, and we look forward to working with you. Please visit WISDOT's DBE certification and DBE program links listed below. Here you'll find valuable information as you go through the application process, as well as the programs and services offered through the DBE office. For DBE certification questions, please contact John Franklin. For all interstate applications, please contact Natalia Vega. Please remember to submit your DBE application through the DBE alert email. For questions on the DBE program and support services, please contact Madalena Maestri. You can feel free to contact me. And for questions on support services, please contact Rosalind Roberson. WISDOT offers two locations for in-person by appointment assistance. Our OBAC central office is located in Madison, or our DBE support services office is located in Milwaukee.